The early days of Philippine television were not smooth sailing. One of the problems at that time was the cost of TV sets. Uh, very few people had TV sets. At that time, it was expensive because uh, it cost about 300 pesos for a TV set. 300 to 500 pesos. And at that time, the dollar rate was 2 to 1. 2 pesos to 1 dollar. If one house has a TV set, all the neighbors come in at 6 o'clock. Your house is full up to the rafters and outside the window just to watch television. Everybody was excited about it because uh, everybody watches regardless whether they watched it a hundred times. Everybody appreciated television because uh, there was no question on uh, what we show and uh, because they were all uh, wholesome. Well, they liked it. It's a matter of affordability, you know. Uh, at that time, there were no uh, installments and things like that. You have to pay gas. It never reached the popularity of radio because of electricity. Where you don't have electricity, you don't have TV, that's it. Because only a few people had TV sets, only a small number of advertisers dared to sponsor shows. To entice advertisers, simulcasts were offered as a promotional gimmick. Programs were aired simultaneously over the radio and TV. Many popular radio shows like Student Canteen started their life on TV this way. Student Canteen was a radio program, and when it became very popular, it became a radio program that's televised. And that was the first uh, live uh, variety show for amateurs that catered to students. I was taken in as commercial announcer and then promoted to co-host. Five years after the first telecast, the Chronicle Broadcasting Network, or CBN, bought ABS from Judge Antonio Quirino. CBN owners Eugenio Lopez Sr. and his brother Fernando merged the two companies under the original name of ABS, Bolinao Electronics Corporation. With the new company, the second television station in the Philippines was launched, DZXL-TV on Channel 9. The corporate name of BEC was changed to ABS-CBN when these two companies formally merged in 1967. One, two, three, five! It was only in the 60s that the other TV stations opened. DZBB-TV Channel 7, DZTV-TV Channel 13, DZTM-TV Channel 5, and DZRH-TV Channel 11. The one who was making money was Bob Stewart. Some of the things that he did were amazing. See, he used the personal approach, the personal approach. So uh, he was advertising, was ad advertising Hope cigarettes, Hope cigarettes. So he had the Hope cigarettes there, see, uh, the, the, in his hand. And he said, no, these cigarettes, these cigarettes are, they're just good, that's all. He said, anyone who tries these cigarettes would never try any others after that. You know, all you have to do is try them, and then you know that they are by far the best. And the camera was zooming in on the Hope cigarettes, but it also took the pocket of his barong, and in the pocket of his barong was a pack of cigarettes. Lucky strike. <laughs> you know, it came in just like that. <laughs> Bob Stewart, the man behind RBS 7, had a special place in the hearts of a generation of kids. For kids growing up in the 50s and 60s, Uncle Bob's Lucky 7 Club was the club to join in. In 1969, Filipinos got to watch the live television coverage of the Apollo 11 historic landing. It was the first telecast via satellite in the country and the first in color. It was also in 1969 when the Radio Philippines Network branched out into television with Channel 9. It was RPN 9 who introduced the longest trending and consistently rating sitcom, John and Marcia. John and Marcia was created by Ading Fernando and it starred Nida Blanca and Dolphy. Yeah, John and Marcia yeah, was the longest, I think, sitcom. 17 years is a long, long time. Jean and Marcia is nationally recognized as one of the greatest Filipino sitcoms of all time, and it had millions of loyal fans. Other top-rated local programs were Buhay Artista, Wild Wild West, and Tawag ng Tanghalan. It was an amateur singing contest hosted by Patsy and Lupito. Other uh, shows was uh, An Evening with Pilita, Nida Nestor Show, um, Magandang Tanghali, Yun ang mga medyo nagbubasa akin. 
During the early years of television, it was a medium for the actor and the performer. By the late 60s, Filipinos were craving for steady doses of reality in the form of news and public affairs programs. The news pioneers were the big news on ABC5 and The World Tonight on ABS-CBN. Before martial law, broadcasting in the Philippines was probably the freest from government control in the world. Freedom of expression was unrestricted to the extent that no politician or public figure could hope to escape permanently from mass media revelations. The Marcos administration was continually attacked by the media, but the late dictator did not take it sitting down. He realized that only absolute control of the medium would stop it.